Hey, Nidhi, uh, I had a quick question. What's your, what's your plan over the weekend? Uh, actually, I have to search a good insurance policy for myself and my family. And honestly, I'm not at all motivated for that. Not motivated? Why? Buying insurance is a good thing, right? Yes, but the hassles that come along from being onboarded to processing the claims and all of that, they're just very tedious and painful. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I think you're looking at the wrong place. Uh, tons of companies who are engaging in insurance is looking at making the whole customer experience a lot better. Is it? But how? Uh, you know what? I can explain that to you, but uh, why me when we have the expert in the house? Uh, we've got Ritesh. He is an, he's a pro at insurance, right? Okay. Uh, he's a product manager with ThoughtWorks um, and has deep understanding of the insurance uh, business value chain, uh, not just from how insurance actually work, but also from enterprise systems as, actually as to how they operate. And uh, if that wasn't enough for me calling him an expert, he also has credentials from Loma and the Institute. Uh, so let me stop talking and just give it to Ritesh for the next set. Thanks, is, uh, I'm going to stop share now. Can you share your slide deck and then we can get started? Before we get started, thanks, Roman, for the kind introduction. And yeah, Nidhi, insurance is not an exciting product. That is the biggest challenge we face in the industry that nobody wakes up in the morning and thinks that today I'll buy insurance and <laughs> I'm very excited to do it. That is a challenge which industry is facing. I hope my screen is up. Yep. Okay. So since this is supposed to be a blazing 10 minutes talk, I would quickly like to go through the breakdown of items that would be covered in this session. Essentially, it's limited to three points, how anything as a service is part of our lives and some nuances around it. Next, how anything as a service model is being utilized in financial services space, and then we'll try to correlate with insurance. And finally, moving on, on to the focus of the talk. What is insurance as a service? and how it might change the insurance industry as we know right now. So moving ahead, yeah, to begin with, the, as per me, the most simplest explanation of anything as a service is essentially everything that organization has to offer, it can be offered as a service. The origin of the term basically lies in cloud computing. And in a sense, it has become virtually synonymous with cloud offering. But in essence, the idea was to move away from licensing or ownership model of software procurement to subscription or consumption-based model, or more popularly we refer to as pay-per-use model. I'm sure nearly all of you recognize the logo shown here and how they've helped the transition from product to as a service models. Starting from the top left corner, the most obvious one is mobility as a service with Ola and Zoomcar as examples, catering to two different needs, like everyday commuting and self-rental vehicles. Ghana and Spotify have entirely replaced the CDs and MP3s that were extremely expensive buys in my childhood. In industry too, we are seeing novel delivery models, such as one where Rolls-Royce is delivering something called jet engine as a service. The service offers power by the hour service segment model. Basically, it is enabling airlines just to pay for use of Rolls-Royce engine as opposed to purchasing engine directly. Rolls-Royce absorbs all the servicing costs that is associated maintaining the equipment. SKF came with a similar thing. They are offering rotation as a service. It's very unique term and they call them rotation for life. So traditionally ball bearings were purchased for price and the transactional approach basically ignored a lot of interrelated elements that contribute to rotation equipment, performance and overall cost of ownership as we know. So what SKF did that they created rotation for life where consumer pay for uninterrupted rotation services. They pay a fixed fee which will cover the provision of bearing, lubricant, seals, repair, as well as replacement. From basically from consumer endpoint, they are not looking for bearing, they're looking for a rotation solution and that is what SKF provided. The last example in this slide, that is coffee as a service, is least known and most interesting. It is also a testament to a broader nature of anything as a service offering. So Panera Bread, it is a bakery come cafe chain in US. They rolled out a new program customers get unlimited coffee across any outlet for a fixed monthly subscription fee. This initiative increased the footfalls in the cafe by around 200%. The food order with coffee grew by around 70%. And the renewal rate of the program also was also at 70%. So it was a highly successful offering. Burger King also tried to do something similar. 
the key takeaway from this slide is that asset ownership, basically buying outrightly something versus rent will not be the only model for anything as a service. It's not limited to a model where provider owns the asset and consumer pays for utility over a period of time. As we progress more, as we progress further, more, more models would emerge. In fact, there are five identifiable elements or, or characteristics of a successful anything as a service model, which is beyond the scope of this talk and it will take much more longer discussion. So moving, yeah. So moving on, what is anything as a service and financial services space? And this is two example from financial services. And one thing to call out here, which a lot of people wonder, how can something that was a service, that is financial service to begin with, can be offered as a service? So service in context of financial service essentially means to denote something intangible. And service in terms of as a service is something that is delivered to end user. So something that can be delivered as a manufactured product that can be delivered as a service itself. So with that thing clear, first example is payments as a service. And it falls into, into the traditional understanding of as a service model. Basically few fintechs along the way figured out issues in payments value chains and they built solution around it. Then they opened the solution to corporates to use that solution on a usage basis. It's a very close match to software as a service model where software is the payment solution. The other example is banking as a service, which talks about allowing non-banks non to offer core financial services to their customers by integrating with bank via APIs. This again is a new way to think about anything as a service where essentially a banking service is being delivered to end user, but by opening up a service to an intermediary. So these two are different models that financial services are using. Moving on, the basically the context setting that, sorry, we have done will be a nice segment to talk about insurance as a service. To be very honest, insurance as a service is a very early stage concept right now, and there is a very little insight on how it will shape in the future. It's whatever trends we can see in anything as a service model and understanding of insurance domain. We are more likely to see adoption in three distinct modes based on engagement models. So I'll call them out quickly before deep diving into each one of them in subsequent slides. So first is insurance as a service solution. Here we'll see fintechs and insurtechs of the world solving a specific problem of insurance value chain and offering them to incumbent insurer. Basically there's traditional insurance companies. The model will really be similar to payment as a service offering that we have seen. Second would be open insurance offerings. This will be similar to banking as a service model. And we will see insurance offering being made available on non-insurance or non-financial platforms. And finally, there will be third will be usage-based insurance. This model is similar to pay-per-use models of as a service models. So starting with the first. So insurance as a service solution, from this perspective, insurance as a service, it means that insurtechs or fintechs will offer traditional insurance the use of selected previewed elements of the insurance value chain on a subscription basis. This essentially will mean for insurance companies that they'll run insurance operation on behalf of the insurance companies. Such platform will mostly be cloud-based and basically will help improve core insurance practice such as underwriting, claim processing, fraud detection, customer service, as the figure in the view illustrates that all the services that you see, the insurance company need not build it. They'll directly just rent it from an insurtech or a fintech so that they can focus more on the risk management side of thing rather than technology side of thing. This trend is being fueled by rapid shift towards digitization. And in addition to basically to digitize at a faster speed is much more, is a bigger pressure for insurance companies. So digitization is a pressure digitize faster is a bigger pressure. And traditionally, these companies have been a bit like arts in adopting technologies. So basically, right now their hands are tied and they are basically forced to work with incumbents to come up with new solution. And this insurance as a service basically approach is part of one such collaboration between insurtechs and established insurance companies. Within this space also, we'll see numerous models emerging. Basically, that will start from core service digitization, basically digitizing a part of a value chain, and it will end with the full stack digitization, like digitizing entire insurance offerings. So basically, insurance company will just be regulated pieces that are doing the actuaries and balance book management, and all IT will be done by some insured techs. In fact, as we are speaking, studies have shown that 81% of large insurance companies across the world 
have either invested in insurtechs or are working with insurtech to build such solutions. Uh, moving ahead. Uh, this model of insurance service, the basically open insurance offering, is a close resemblance to banking as a service model that we have seen earlier. This is an end-to-end -end approach, basically that facilitates fintech and other third-party organization to connect with insurance system and basically offer its product by employing or using the insurance company APIs. This will help the ecosystem of fintech or any e-commerce organization to offer build innovative insurance offering and upon the infrastructure that the incumbent insurer have already built. The model will work precisely as it is shown in the diagram. So basically, the insurance org will provide insurance as a service solution to any organization that is willing to build on top of it. Then this organization can offer insurance product to end consumer. The right slide of the slide basically has some examples, some of which you already see in our day to day life such as travel insurance being offered while flight or hotel bookings. With advancement in insurance as a service model, this will get highly personalized. So right now the current offering that we see is basically one size fit all offering. Another example could be Apple or Fitbit. Basically they offer health insurance on their smartwatches. Amazon could offer business insurance to SMEs versus the large data that they have from the seller side of marketplace. Amazon could also offer property insurance that the products that are purchased on Amazon platform. Heads up for tail basic is a pet care platform. They mean may, in future, they may offer pet insurance directly on your platform. So basically the purchase of insurance, it will be taken up by these e-commerce and they will package insurance in somewhat of innovative form. And then it will get offered to end consumer. Finally, moving on to the last model that will come up. I think I'm doing okay on time, given we are a bit ahead also. So this is the last model and this basically is most interesting one, since this will be directly beneficial for end consumer. It's somewhat similar to Rolls-Royce check engine as a service model, in a sense that consumer will be only paying for the portion that they're using. A lot of us who owns two-wheeler or a car would also relate to it. Like during pandemic lockdown, lockdown and subsequent work from home, the vehicle usage was near to zero. But at the time of insurance renewal, the premiums more or less remained the same. Despite reduction in accidental risk, since vehicles were driven less, the premiums did not change. This is primarily because traditional underwriting policy focus only on value of vehicle plus some other factors such as claim history to arrive at the premiums. And usage-based insurance, basically it is solution to such customer need that if I'm using less, I should be paying less premiums. So insurance company in future will start to offer pay how you drive or pay as you drive. Pay as you drive should be a simpler solution where vehicle driven less will attract lesser premium. Vehicle that are driven more will attract higher premium. Okay, and pay how you drive is somewhat of, of a complex thing where basically driving patterns will be analyzed to determine how safer a person is as a driver. And then the premiums will be derived based on the driving platform. Improved telematics and self-driving car basically will for fuel further development to this process. The basically pay how you drive solution. On the other side, health insurance companies are also investigating variables that could be linked pay as you live policy, like built on the same concept of automotive telematics. Individuals could be offered attractive premiums based on healthy lifestyle that can be tracked through their smartwatches or mobiles. This is again still an evolving thing as we know, but it will be again beneficial to the people who basically try to get a healthy lifestyle. They should not be paying premium equivalent to someone who is not following a healthy lifestyle. The principle behind that is that the lesser the risk, you should pay a lesser premium. So with that, we have come to the end of the insurance service, the short talk. Insurance as a service is still an evolving stage, but if complete potential of that is harnessed, it will be beneficial for everyone in the value chain. It will be beneficial for insurance company, all the startups that are trying to solve the problem in value chain. It will be beneficial for end customers also. And maybe it will make purchase of insurance more exciting.